Hello guys, nice to see you. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Hello everyone. So, uh, first thing, yeah, hello, nice to see you guys. Uh, first of all, we need to discuss one moment. So, uh, I recently got to know that um, Askar, one of our um, instructors who uh, was, who is teaching um, recitations, he got sick and uh, temporarily he will not be able to um, continue his uh, duties. That's why, uh, first of all, I want to share with you, probably he already did that, but it's, of course it matters only to those who um, are in his sections for recitations, uh, but anyone can uh, use this link. So there is a link uh, where you can watch some uh, presentations on solving problems from Askar uh, and uh, uh, where he in details explains how uh, this should be done for different types of problems. And uh, specifically during this um, period of uh, time when he is not um, in service because of um, objective reason of his health issues. Uh, we can also discuss certain uh, questions uh, during our um, meetings, online meetings, uh, taking into account the nature of this flip uh, class, which we want to um, provide uh, for you guys uh, taking into account this uh, um, pandemic conditions. Uh, so we definitely uh, can, it would be great if you can manage to formulate um, some physics question, which is not clear from some specific problems. Uh, so we can discuss it on the way. Um, if uh, it's difficult for you, so you can uh, ask question as you uh, understand it. And then uh, we could together formulate some uh, specific um, physics related uh, uh, topic which could help to uh, solve this type of uh, particular uh, problem. Uh, <clears throat> so unfortunately, we it's like unexpected, um, obviously, and uh, I hope that he will uh, get uh, health in back in service quite soon. Uh, so let's wish him good health and uh, soon recovery. Uh, okay. Any any questions now? Any uh, problems which you experience? Oh, sorry. Uh, so I didn't understand. Like during the recitation sessions, what should we do? Uh, like so, who who is like in the Ascars group? Yeah, those who are in Ascars group. Uh, since we uh don't have him actively now uh involved uh you watch the uh, examples of uh, solving problems on this via this link which i shared with, with uh, where he posts his uh, solutions of problems and uh bring your questions if you have um, any questions try to formulate what is not clear in the uh, problems you solve in terms of understanding uh, physics would be ideal to have this more focused, like physics focused discussion. And we can uh, discuss this during these meetings, like which we have uh, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So far, uh, until he comes back, I hope it will be something like uh, later this 
week, maybe early next week, we'll see. So we will try to combine uh, these um, questions from recitations with our uh, new material discussion. So any other questions? Okay, so you're welcome with your uh, questions which are coming from solving problems. We can discuss them also here. So technically this is uh, the purpose of our discussion. So uh, I try to, from my side to introduce you topics, like new topics, and uh, discuss in details on um, physics concepts. But uh, the main idea of our discussions is actually discussion of, of your questions. You are encouraged to, uh, to come up with questions, and we can definitely dedicate uh, time to that. OK, so now we, Sorry. yeah. Oh, uh, so we can now ask about like our solutions of these problems, like. Uh... So there are certain problems from textbook on on uh, topics uh, which we are working on. So uh, with this type of problems, like general problems, we can discuss um, what approaches should be uh, done to. to solve these type of problems. Yes, uh, can we discuss uh, please the very, like the last ones from Lon Kappa, which we had like uh, as a homework, these ones, can we like um, talk about them? Yeah, sure, we can. Now it's when it's uh, already finished this uh, interval of time for solving them and you already submitted uh, the answers to your homework, and we definitely can uh, discuss. Usually, I believe you discuss this with uh, Askar. Yeah, here I have, I see some comments that Askar will post some videos on that uh, problems. I believe he continues to, to uh, contribute even while he is not feeling so good. Uh, so definitely there could be some discussion of these uh, problems on the YouTube channel. However, it really depends on how he feels. So it's currently not, not clear how it goes. Uh, but uh, this, uh, his uh, YouTube channel will be a good um, like platform for uh, getting feedback on different types of problems, including those which uh, were assigned for, for homework. But yeah, if you have some particular questions, we can discuss them also here. So you're, you're welcome to ask some. Uh, yeah, there was some question like problem number three. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know the problems. I haven't, I haven't seen them. I didn't, don't assign those problems. So you're welcome to discuss the like explain the problem and we can start some discussion on it. Friction problem. Okay. So two blocks with masses M1 and M2 showing the figure free to move. Uh, yeah, it would be good if we can have the figure also, uh, if you can attach here, the coefficient of static uh, friction between the block, the blocks is 0.25 beneath is friction. So the surface beneath the M2 is frictionless. What if the minimum force F required to hold M1 against M2. 
Uh, could you please also attach the, the figure because it's not so clear from the text? There should be. Is it possible to attach figure? I'm trying, but I think it's not. Oh, oh, something is actually going on. Uh, mm -hmm. Now it's a question how I screenshot. I can only download, but I, I need to open it somehow. <laughs> Okay, I guess I open this, this figure. So let us read again. So there is two blocks with masses M1 and M2. Okay, we have this two block. Then the coefficient of static friction between blocks. Okay, between blocks. Mm -hmm. But the surface beneath M2 is frictionless. Okay, what is the minimum force F required to hold M1 against M2? So as I understand that M1 doesn't slide down uh, with respect to M2. Okay. Uh, then definitely if there is no friction, let us consider the situation. There is no friction between M2 and the surface. So it will slide without any, any problems. And uh, we need to have some acceleration of this motion in order to press enough uh, mass uh, M1 towards M2. Uh, so that the force is enough to keep the reaction of M2 to M1 is enough to keep the uh, M1 from sliding down. And uh, sliding uh, down, there is a, uh, let me maybe then change my screen. Okay. So, have the surface mass M2, mass M1. Okay, here is the force, and here is no friction. So, okay guys, so any suggestions? How did you approach this, this problem? So what do you consider is important here? The normal force, uh, the normal force of the first mass should be equal to the gravitational pull. So normal force, like force of static friction, I yes, believe. I meant, I meant that, yes. Yeah, 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 okay. That is true. So here we have weight will be M1 times G. You can put vector. Then obviously our static friction is pointed uh, in the opposite direction. Static 
friction force. And uh, um, this should be uh, equal. So now we know, what do we know? We know the friction, the static friction coefficient, yes? It's given, so our mu s is equal to 0 0.25. So how we can now write the, uh, so we set the condition fs is equal to mg, and how we can express fs now, any ideas? Uh, it's like the normal force of uh, mm -hmm. like M1, like against F. Yes, yeah, so we have and some and, uh, friction coefficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good, thanks. So we have some uh, reaction force from uh, mass M2 on mass M1. Uh, it's like N, let's say. And this, uh, we know from like previous discussions that friction, static friction is equal to mu S times this reaction force. And in this case, reaction force will be uh, actually the force with which we need to push uh, the uh, system. Uh, in order to uh, keep it attached to one uh, between each other. So we can write that Fs is equal to this force F equal to uh, mg. And uh, that will be. Uh, excuse me, what's F yes. here? Uh, so this. Okay, that's probably not good. Let's get rid of it. Then we will put mu S and this reaction N. Uh, then they are equal and this body will not slide down. So, okay, so this we have. So this is M1. Uh, now let us check which uh, N this reaction should be. So this reaction should be M1G divided by mu S. Okay, so now the question will be, how we get this uh, N uh, in terms of applied force F. So if we don't have any friction, there is no friction force here underneath and all this system of M2 uh, plus M1, uh, so M1 plus M2, can easily slide on the surface without any resistance. So any ideas, how do we proceed yeah. first? Um, so what I did is uh, I uh, expre expressed F as M1 plus M2 times acceleration, like the um, okay. acceleration of the system. Is equal to M1 plus M2 times acceleration of the whole system of two uh, bodies. Mm -hmm. However, most likely it's not the case. Yeah? There yeah. is maybe the effect should be uh, some kind of semi analogical to the, that of the problems with the lift moving up upwards or downwards 
But no, what why this concept does not work? Uh like if next, like we know that the um, uh, net acceleration is a like whichever a is and we now have to find this a and in order to mm -hmm. find it what i did is like uh m1 times a it's the force that m1 um applies to m2 and there is a reaction force n so i um like i did that n is equal to m1 times a because m1 like applies the force equal to m1 times a yeah okay so let's say this is what we have for whole system of two blocks then we have uh two forces we have one force f1 2 which exerts m1 on uh m2 and some force f2 1 which is a force uh which is exerted from m2 on m1 okay so uh then it should be definitely equal just opposite like let's say amplitudes of this vector should be equal according to the third law uh, of motion. So uh, these forces will be equal to products of total acceleration to respective masses. So M1 plus times A would be equal to M2 times A. Does it make sense? It yeah. makes sense because of third law of Newton, right? Wait, the forces yeah. are equal. Wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. uh, you wrote mm -hmm. what M m1 times a equal to m2 times a yeah but isn't their acceleration the same yes acceleration Even the mass is also would be same. yeah acceleration is the same so that is but masses are different yeah so it means, it means the acceleration is supposed to be different in this case mm -hmm. but then we come back to this point when we need to move these two bodies attached to each other. So they should be uh, moving together. If they move together and the body M1 is not attached to, uh, not sliding with respect or doesn't, is not detached from M2, then means that these guys move uh, as one system. And there is only one acceleration. Mm -hmm. Any other ideas? Maybe we yes. should draw the, the analogy with the lift. When the when the system is moving, when the system has the acceleration in the direction of the weight of, mm -hmm. of the object. Then the normal force some kind of cancels a bit. Okay. That is a problem. That is already interesting. So let's get rid of some. Oops. We have some space here. So what then we have? Uh, we have two systems, then all of them are moving with some, because that obviously that is for sure true on uh, this statement. If we apply some force, they are attached together. We need to consider both masses and uh, they will move with some acceleration A. Okay, so then 
we need to so your suggestion is that uh, this reaction force uh, will be changed because of some additional acceleration. However, that would, that discussion when we had this example with the lift was body here. And uh, here we have mg. So acceleration was parallel to the uh, weight vector. Acceleration, and this is a weight vector. In that case, uh, we could have get different um, like change the acceleration of free fall by uh, moving the system with uh, additional acceleration, either increase or decrease. However, here, so mg is pointed downwards and acceleration goes in perpendicular. So we don't consider this mg and stick to the force. Uh, then we apply force to m1. It will be f divided by m1 plus m2, so it's acceleration of the system. Uh, yeah, so professor, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, what I said, why is it wrong? Like if we consider that now the reaction force uh, is equal to m1 times a. The reaction force is equal to M1 times A. That was the problem with this statement. M1 is times A uh, would be equal to, if it, we set it equal to M2 times A, then we cannot no, claim. Uh, I'm not saying that it is equal to M2 times A. I'm saying okay. that M1, like M1, um, uh, the acceleration acts on M1 and therefore it produces a force equal to F is equal to M1 times A. Then the reaction... Yeah, I agree, but that is the force with which uh, M1 acts on M2. And uh, we need to know the reaction of M2 on M1. Yes, and this is like M1 times A, it's the same. Acceleration is like towards the mm -hmm. right side. Okay, yeah. And so what you, you substitute this M1, uh, so what you say that, okay, we have uh, N is equal to M1 times A, which is equal to M1 times F divided by M1 plus M2. Yes? Yes, and now we can... Uh, we can... This is equal to um, M1 times G divided by uh, mu S. Okay, sure. Let's clean here. Then what we have, we have, we need to come back to this point. Uh, we have M1 G is equal to mu S times N and N we claim that this one because it's acceleration of this first uh, body uh, and M1 times acceleration gives us the force and that's the force which, with which we act on body M2, and we get some reaction 
uh, from body M2, which is equal uh, in the magnitude, but opposite in the direction, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we get uh, M1 times F divided by M1 plus M2. And we have uh, to multiply it also by mu S. Then we can already determine force F. Yeah, let's do it. So M1 times G, M1 plus M2 divided by mu S times M1. And that should give us the force with which we need to push this system of two blocks. Yes? Yes, and we also can cancel out M1. Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. So technically our force is defined by the mass of the system of two bodies and uh, uh, reversally proportional to mu S. So what does it mean? The larger masses, like sum of masses of these two blocks, the smaller force we need to apply. So this the larger force we need to apply because we need to accelerate it properly. Uh, and uh, the larger friction coefficient will be Obviously, the smaller force we need to apply because this body M1 will slide down more difficultly with some like resistance from the surface. Uh, so does it make from physical point of view sense? It does. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. Cool. Uh, however, uh, this concept like I did with this concept and my answer is wrong. Yeah. For me as well. I think there should be something else. I have a question here. Mm -hmm. Why the net force is uh, equal to the normal force? Like, uh, isn't it uh, net force for the first mass equal to the drive force minus the normal force? Oh, can you please repeat? Like, uh, more clear? M1 A equals to the drive force F minus N. Okay. So and then we can bring the N and find it. Okay, okay, okay. So what you tell now that we have uh, our force minus reaction force is equal to m1 times a. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Because it's direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then we have some, let's say, two forces which act on the body. We compensate them, and there is some uh, uh, resultant uh, force, uh, which causes the acceleration of M1 with some value A. Uh, okay, let's consider this option. So let us clean this again here. So 
uh, we need to know the uh, force. Force is unknown. Then minus n. My, and we can write down because we kind of know which n should be uh, based on this equality. So we can write that instead of n, m1 times g divided by mu s. Okay, like this. Make sense? Yes. Good. And then it is equal to um, m1 times acceleration. And this acceleration we can express also from here, which is equal to uh, m1 times f divided by the sum of two masses. Okay, so we can rearrange this. Let me delete this part. Rearrange this uh, in order to express F. So it will be F uh, minus M1 times F divided by M1 plus M2. And this will be equal to M1 times G divided by mu s. From here, we can express f, and that will be one minus m1 divided by m1 plus m2. And that was equal to m1 times g divided by mu s. Didn't we forget anything? No, that's the equation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, like final step, we express uh, F. So let us maybe write it here so we can have it everything on our screen. And this will be F is equal to M times G divided by mu S. And here is one minus M1 divided by one plus M2. And here is M1. Okay, so what do we have here now? So first, let us check if uh, units are correct, because we need to be sure that we end up with some force. Uh, but that should be OK, because we express n, it's also force as m1 divided by g uh, times g divided by mu s. Uh, so in this case, uh, we didn't change anything. We just have some additional coefficient in the denominator. And this coefficient is uh, dimensionless. So we have mass divided by mass and one minus some dimensionless number. Uh, so in terms of units, it should give us uh, the force. And uh, then what? We have, again, mu s in the denominator means larger uh, friction coefficient than we have. Uh, lower uh, force to apply because it doesn't slide. And then we have M1 in the uh, numerator, means the larger this M1, um, kind of Mg, the weight of this body will be larger. We need to uh, uh, appropriately adjust this. And uh, uh, What is about this coefficient here? 
uh, we have one minus the ratio of M1 as mass to the mass of the whole block. So if we have um, M2 infinitely large, let's say it's uh, much larger than M1, uh, so we have very large number in denominators, so small divided by very large, it will be uh, kind of approaching to zero. So it will be just M1 times G divided by mu S. Uh, <clears throat> then technically this will be the case when uh, this M2 will be literally a wall. Uh, means we push, but it, it, regardless of no friction, its mass is so big that it just doesn't move. So all force which we will apply, it will be a reaction force. And uh, that will keep our body again sliding on the uh, surface between M1 and M2. Uh, however, if we consider that M2, for instance, is uh, zero, let's say, yeah, zero, it doesn't exist, then one minus M1 divided uh, by M1, and that will give us unity. So one minus one, it will be zero. So we will have some division by zero, means that uh, we will have zero in the denominator, means that this condition is not physically reasonable because uh, obviously there should be something to uh, uh, slide on. Uh, with uh, some surface between M1 and definitely that should be some mass M2. If we put it zero, it doesn't give us physical response. So it looks like that this combination uh, uh, quite accurately addresses the condition of this problem. So did you consider to try this solution in long kappa? Yes. Yes, and yes, it gave her. It says it's wrong. Else no, it, no yeah. it's it's right. It's correct. My answer oh, was yeah. correct. Yeah, I <laughs> believe because you see that it's not just getting the answer, uh, because you can you can miss something. It's like we all people. You get the answer and you spend some time looking at this answer and trying to understand like how this equation which you get will behave um, under different uh, given conditions. Um, so if we go to some extreme points now, so we check the units, units are fine, but our previous solution, we had also units fine. That was not a problem. So you can check only units and um, that will result in the wrong solution because units, that's one thing. But besides that, this equation should also describe the uh, physically based behavior of this system. And if you go into a bit deeper into this uh, analysis of this equation, it really tells us that indeed it will behave like this. As we discussed, if we take mass M2 infinity means it's just anchored wall, which doesn't slide. Um, then we get F is equal to N. No problems, that's easy. Uh, but if it goes to zero, it doesn't exist, then we cannot push against anything. And this equation doesn't give us uh, any physical answer because it's division by zero, which means completely wrong. So uh, such condition would not be an option for this uh, case. And uh, uh, once you feel already these boundary conditions, replications, uh, that's very good to figure out what is the most applicable. Uh, if your solution is really uh, valid in this case. Okay, guys, so I think this is it. 
Um, so uh, I think that we can uh, continue uh, on our next uh, meeting on Wednesday uh, with uh, some uh, problems discussion, but also keep in mind that today we start um, this uh, chapter, which includes force, like work done by force, uh, kinetic energy, and potential energy. So um, I believe we will try to uh, manage also this introduction of key concepts. I will shortly, since we now this divide time for uh, some problems, discussions, and uh, discussions of the material, uh, which is the planned format of our work initially. Uh, but I do believe that it's important to dedicate more time to uh, discussion of physics um, because uh, that's important to understand the concepts and where they come from. But we will try to, these topics are not so difficult yet, and uh, we will manage to do it in uh, a bit compressed uh, format. So we will definitely discuss them, but also in parallel can address some um, problems. But uh, this problem was actually very good in terms of understanding uh, laws of motions, uh, which definitely um, helps a lot in understanding quite broad range of uh, problems on this topic. Okay, guys, then thank you very much for attention and uh, um, hope to see you all on Wednesday. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Right. Bye. 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 Thank you. Goodbye. 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 Thank you. Take care. Yeah. You see, people got sick, so take care. That's important. Thank you. Have a good Bye. day. Mm -hmm.